Buffs Nation, Buffs Nation, Buffs Nation. What's going on? It is game day week. We got TCU here in just a few days. Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Mountain, 11 Central, big noon Eastern time. Cannot wait for that. Apparently, we're going to be rolling out with some new white uniforms with some gold that you've never seen before. My guess is that it's going to be some of that metallic gold that we've kind of seen teased in the different well-off, reach the people, media, videos throughout the off-season. That's my hope. Get this gold looking a little metallic, right? But I wanted to get on here really quick and give my reaction to the documentary that I watched last night called BS High. It's an HBO documentary that they did on Bishop Sycamore High School. <laughs> My goodness, this was insanity. I remember when this happened, maybe it was a couple years ago, where you saw that IMG Academy was playing uh, this school called Bishop Sycamore. I wasn't watching it on ESPN, but then I remember going on Twitter and everybody's talking about how Bishop Sycamore is a fake school. I think IMG ended up beating Bishop Sycamore like 58 to zero or something like that. They had a running clock in the second half. All these players are getting hurt. And, I mean, I, I remember asking myself, how could a school that's that doesn't exist get on ESPN? How could they play these teams? <laughs> and, man, this documentary was insane. I hope you go and check this out. But, man, uh, the, the main character the main con man, Roy Johnson, man, um, he is a kind of sociopath. I mean, his, his whole thing was wanting to create, you know, a Christian prep school uh, football powerhouse in Ohio. And the way he went about that, it was uh, extremely uh, interesting because I'm not really sure what his big gain in this whole thing was other than to be recognized um and man i like you guys got to go see this like the way in which guys if you've never been um in a cult or if you've never uh been in business with like a shady businessman or anything like that uh please go watch this documentary because you're going to see the red flags of who or uh, of what kinds of qualities you need to stay away from. People are coming after you, you know. And, man, what this guy did, Roy Johnson, man, just terrible. Um, a, a little synopsis or a summary, I think it was in 2019, he was working with this Methodist church to open up a private school. But before the school even opened, he was recruiting guys to come play for uh, the Christians of Faith football program. And I mean, this happened for years. The school actually never happened, but these players would come in. He would house them in different apartment complexes or hotels and uh, until they would get evicted for never paying. And then he would move them to a, another unit or something like that. So for years, this guy is racking up all sorts of lawsuits and fines, uh, you know, get, getting hit with all these uh, legal fees that he's not paying for never paying for the housing for any of these students. It's terrible. And they would just get their butt whooped. Uh, they would look to schedule the, the toughest teams in the country. And what blows my mind is that this guy, Roy Johnson, is he's recruiting players to come play for them. This guy doesn't know football. This guy's like getting his plays off of Madden. There's no uh, game plan. There's no coaching. There's no strategy. Like he's not getting these guys in the weight room training. Nothing like that. I feel so bad uh, for, for these <laughs> for these players. But the most messed up thing out of uh, out of this whole thing was is that he was charging kids to come play for them. Uh, like this was a true private school or prep school where tuition is you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars and he's getting all of these players to hand over social security numbers to them, all this personal information, and he's taking PPP loans out in these students' names. And I think that's just the heartbreaking thing um, out of this whole 
this whole documentary was, I mean, I remember like all the players getting made fun of because they're like 18, 19, 21 years old. Right. Um, but I mean, the documentary really goes into in detail, just how convincing this con man, Roy Johnson was getting these players, selling them on, Hey, you just come here. The grades are going to be figured out. You don't need to worry about school. We're going to get you D1. We're going to get you into uh, all these powerhouse schools. And uh, this guy really took advantage of kids that kind of needed a last chance, so to speak, to uh, make their football dreams come true. He took advantage of that. And he took loans out in the names of these players when they didn't even realize it. And I think that's uh, really the heartbreaking thing because uh, them not paying on these loans, them taking out these loans, it uh, it's going to affect their credit. It's going to affect their ability to get financing uh, later down the line in life. And, um, you know, they fall around the quarterback who seemed to be a, a, a really charismatic, really great guy. And after this whole Bishop Sycamore thing fell through, he's getting recruited by um, Grambling State and uh hugh jackson but once they found out and they actually offered him he committed to to go to grambling state this is a year after the whole bishop sycamore stuff fell through i uh, was really happy for him but because he went to a fake school uh he was ruled ineligible and uh, actually could not enroll and uh, you know come onto the football team at grambling state so it, it it was really unfortunate. They you know they show you all these players and kind of where they ended up. Some ended up uh, walk ons at different programs, but most of them uh, they had to move on from their college football dream. And it was really cool. One of the guys, I think he was like a left tackle, some sort of offensive lineman. He's coming out with a rap album titled "Life After Bishop Sycamore." So. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. But this was a documentary that, I mean, it was maybe an hour and 20 minutes. Please go and watch it. Um, but it's it's terrible how this guy, Roy Johnson, can set up these fake football programs, these fake schools, and it's not actually against the law. And that's like the brilliance of this guy is that he was able to figure out like, hey, I can get these hotel rooms for free three months free and not have to pay a dime or i can i can set up this fake private school and claim that it's a religious school and then uh, not have to follow any of these uh, high school laws for the state of ohio like all of that but it, it was really weird it was really weird that um, I'm not really sure what the end goal was for him other than maybe like a few hundred thousand dollars, you know, what he made off this whole thing. Uh, it's it's odd, but you can see as the documentary goes goes on of just how sociopathic this coach is, you know, talking about character, talking about how um, he's going to get these guys trained for D1 because he got his brother into Ohio State, right? But you know, him beating up his girlfriend, a domestic violence charge, him um, running over geese uh, on the road intentionally, then telling the boys like, you know, sometimes you just need uh, to smell, you know, the, the fresh smell of blood um, to get yourself going. Like, this is what life is like. He's teaching all these guys, all these players how to scam. And I felt so bad for them because some of them felt so trapped and so embarrassed that they couldn't even tell their parents, call home and say, hey, mom, like, this guy is teaching me to do the stuff that like I was trying to avoid at home, <laughs> my football coach. And Bomani Jones really hits it on the, uh, uh, on the head, the nail on the head where he talks about how, you know, just like, for instance, a father or a pastor or, you know, coach is kind of in that same line of authority where it holds a, a certain level of trust and, uh, with, with people. And it's just, it's just terrible that this man would abuse that sort of title and really take advantage of um, all of these, uh, all of these kids for his own financial gain. And it's something I think that, you know, they show that this kind of issue with prep school sports, you know, this is where you take it to the extreme where academics aren't, aren't, like prioritized really at all. And, you know, this is what you get. 
Um, you know, I, I do think that they brought some awareness of just some laws that need to change in states, you know, to ensure that kids are going to class, that they have real teachers and education, um, because I, I think these kids were sold something that, um, at, you know, at the end of the day, it, it didn't come to fruition what they were actually getting. Like they were sold just an empty bag of, of poop. Like that's, that's what it was. You tried to paint poop gold, right? Is that the saying or so? But please go check it out. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. And yeah, this guy, Roy Johnson, man, he's, he's a terrible person. And you can see that he has no empathy where he's just blaming these kids as they're crying, saying, you don't realize how much we did for you. That's what these narcissists always try to do. They try and blame you for why this whole tragedy happened. They always try to victim blame, you know, saying, well, you didn't work hard enough. I gave you this opportunity. This was the gap year that you were waiting for. You got that extra year uh, because of this prep school. And the fact that you didn't go D1, that's your fault. No. No, no, it's not. You actually put these kids in thousands of, uh, of dollars of debt, some uh, against their knowledge. And uh, I mean, you made them ineligible for college football. <laughs> I mean, that's that's terrible. And you can see that he thinks that this whole thing is wonderful because he's now getting the publicity that he wants. Again, his uh, his narcissistic and sociopathic uh, personality as you get throughout this documentary is on full display. And man, it's, it's terrible that, that these kids, some of them were suicidal after all of this, um, you know, but betraying the trust as a coach, a player's trust as a coach. Uh, it's a, it's a, it can be a traumatic thing, especially for some of these players that, you know, sometimes the coach is the, the closest male figure that they have in their life. And, uh, this guy, Roy Johnson, should be ashamed of himself. He should be in prison. I hope this leads to more lawsuits. And we need to keep this guy away from young men. We need to keep this guy away from children. Uh, because even if these players are, you know, the, they're technically adults. I mean, come on. When you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you barely know anything about the world. And, uh, he, you know, he was taking advantage of this loophole where these guys are technically adults, but still can be taken advantage of. And, uh, man, the whole thing is just unfortunate because these kids didn't get anything that they were promised. And, yeah, so I wanted to keep this really short. Uh, this was just something that I wanted to talk about, a little unrelated to Colorado football. But, man. Uh, <laughs> please go watch it that. And then, uh, I did watch some of the swamp, the, the one on, uh, on, on the university of Florida this past week and urban Meyer. I was a bit pissed that I feel like they just overlooked a lot of the issues with the football program. I think they only mentioned Aaron Hernandez by name once, which is kind of frustrating, but overall I enjoyed it. So, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've seen this. If you watch Bishop Sycamore, what you think of Roy Johnson, but man, that guy, that guy is terrible. And I hope this leads to more uh, justice for those kids. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of these loans and PPP loans that they had, that he had these players take out in their name, some against their knowledge, you know, um, hopefully all this is sorted out to where uh, they won't have to pay that anymore. So um, I'll be back later today. Got to talk buffs, you know, um, and all that. But, oh, after the game. Has a comment here. Do you think the new ASU head coach, Kenny Dillingham, went overboard with his team culture demands with Jamon Mitchell to maybe prove himself as a new head coach? I mean, that could definitely be the case. Um, I, I think if he has a zero tolerance policy, um, you know, that makes sense for him to take kind of a harsh tone. Again, I'm not really sure what went on, so it's kind of hard for me to speak about. But, um, you know, just because you have one issue at one place does not mean that it's going to repeat here at CU. But um, if he does have re repeated disciplinary issues, that's definitely something to keep note of. I would imagine that um, it's going to be a zero um tolerance policy here where if he if he screws up he's going to be out of here but you know hopefully this is the the right environment for him to get that right i'm not really sure what led to his transfers at texas 
or at Tennessee. Uh, so I don't know if that was just based on playing time or if they had to deal with, you know, um, some disciplinary issues. I, I, I don't really know, but I do think uh, Kenny Dillingham, you know, he's got to, especially as a first time head coach, you know, you got to, you got to keep that standard and it's, it's really important um, to not let anybody kind of have those different privileges, if that makes sense, especially when you're a young, unproven head coach trying to establish a culture, you got to be, you got to be 100, you got to be uh, consistent. So um, I don't really have an issue with it, but again, I can't really uh, speak on it that much because I don't really know the uh, the details of it, right? And distance himself from recruiting violations from the previous co head coach, Herm Edwards. Yeah, and I think that's part of it too. You know, I'm not really sure what Herm Edwards did, <laughs> and I don't know what kind of recruiting violations he was doing that were uh, or that was leading to this kind of uh, self imposed bowl ban which I don't think Arizona State's going to get to a bowl game this year, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. I know that Kenny Dillingham did get a one-year automatic one-year contract extension because of this bowl ban, so I think he knew it was coming regardless of his uh, comments that he had either this morning or this weekend about that. can't remember when those were filmed, but yeah, as a young head coach, you have to make sure that you're, you're being consistent, that you're being um, true to the standards that you're setting, if, uh, you know, if it's clear that there's a big difference of, of um, accountability, that's going to affect the team culture in a negative way, especially when he doesn't come in here with the cachet of, of a higher known head coach or uh, somebody with, with playing experience like, like Coach Prime, you know, with a gold jacket. So, um, yeah, but, but overall, I think, uh, I think Kenny Dillingham, you know, I've talked about this on a lot of my live streams. I think he's a really great hire for Arizona state. I'm hoping that the alumni base uh, can provide him the support that he needs. The boosters can finally, you know, invest in football to the level that, um, uh, they need to, to, uh, I think really reach their potential, you know, as a school, as a program, because they're, if they're not the biggest school in the country, they are one of the um, largest schools in the country. And uh, I mean, the, the results that they've had have been, uh, poor compared to where I feel like they could be at. So I think Dillingham coming back to his alma mater, you see that, uh, it's looking like they're going to go ahead and start the true freshman Rashada, which is a big get for them. Uh, quite exciting, quite exciting stuff. Um, I'm hoping that CU can handle them just because, of, uh, you know, having a true freshman quarterback, there's going to be some growing pains with there. But I, I do think that Kenny Dillingham, he, he can sure he can surely coach. So, yeah, after the game, um, head coaches are rarely blamed. It's always the player that has the issue. And, yeah, that's <laughs> I that's usually how it is for the most part, because uh, we don't usually get a chance to hear the other side. That's that's really just it. Um and I don't know too much about what is going on at Arizona State. If, uh, if there is a greater culture issue post Herm Edwards, I don't think there is. But again, with a lot of these disciplinary issues, we just hear about what went wrong and why they're not on the team, you know. And a lot of the times, I think the players don't choose to speak out about it because if they choose to speak out about it, then at their next spot, um, you know, that might hurt their chances of getting to a next spot, so to speak, if they're going out and publicly criticizing a coach. Um, <laughs> I don't think that that's right. Um, but that's that's the reality of kind of where we're at, right? If Juju starts, who, whose place will he take? Man, um, that's a good question. I think, I think they're going to start Des Moines Kennedy. So um, maybe Levanta Bentley, but... I, I think that they've they've been pretty uh, pleased with him as well. Uh, but outside of that, I think our our linebacker room is looking a little rough um, or a little thin, rather. I mean, of course, we have Jeremiah Brown. I'm wondering if we'll kind of see him on the edge as well. But kind of that the four man rotation, I would see him in there as that. So Levante Bentley, Des Moines Kennedy. Uh, Jeremiah Brown, 
and uh, and Juju. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that you would expect those those guys um, to to be there. I'm not really sure how you can compare him right now to Bentley or Demoy Kennedy. Um, I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out. But I don't think you'll see him start immediately. Um, even if he's a better player, it's going to take him a little while to uh, get familiar with the system. And but hopefully, as time goes on, you know, we can see him getting on the field more. So um, I wish I could speak more to that. If we had preseason games in in college football, I feel like I'd be able to speak to this a little bit better. But um, man, it's hard when you're only watching some selected clips of practice from. Uh, you know, credentialed media or whatever. So it's kind of hard to get an idea of what's really going on with the team. You know, we don't really know, but what's great is that we only have uh, four more days, four more days and, until that. So we got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then uh, Saturday morning, by the time we wake up, we got some good football going on. So um, I appreciate you after the game. Zulus, what's up? I'm just wrapping up over here, but thank you for for tuning in. Um, y'all be sure to let me know in the comments what you think about Bishop Sycamore. I got to get back to some work. I'll be back later today. But as always, Sco Buffs.